the guy who shot him was wanted for a homicide. The three other guys were wanted for shootings and a homicide. And the real bad guys. They had no qualms about shooting a cop. No qualms. Not at no, all. No. We're up there, you know, doing the paperwork or whatever. All of a sudden, it sounds like a faucet running, right, in the uh, holding cell. Look over, and this guy's pouring blood from his crotch. Yeah, yeah that doesn't, that's not a usual did, well, event. Usually they, they just bang the head off the wall. Right, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> So they took him to Harlem Hospital, gave him some duct tape, and uh, <laughs> you know, he was he was, he was, he was right as rain for the perp walk later that night. It's going to be a great episode. I'm very, very excited. And someone said, who is the toughest cop in NYPD history? And some guy goes, two words, Tommy Kennedy. He didn't say Mark DeMeo or Billy no, Cannon, no. so... Well, he definitely wasn't going to say Mark DeMeo. <laughs> <laughs> if, if the question was, who knew how to scam, get over, <laughs> do his least work as man as possible, I would have probably been at the top but of the list. But they didn't yeah. ask that question. No, but it was the, the GOAT, one of the greatest of all time here, is here with us today. Uh, we're very, uh, very proud to have you. Honored to be here, truly. Hey, um, before we start, I just want to tell you guys, I apologize if I smell like weed. <laughs> no, I do because uh, it's because I smoked right now before I got here. I was in Florida. We may, for a ha- week. We may have to hook you up. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> shit, I'm retired, man. I'm a free man now. Now I was in Florida for a week. If you can't tell my beautiful tan, right? Yeah. That. yeah, I was in Fort Lauderdale and uh, a little bit of Orlando, and uh, I didn't know what to do, man. I, you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a retired police officer and get caught like, I don't know, getting on a plane with weed. So no, I just I can't bring it should. on there. Yeah. And then you could mail it down there, but then, God forbid, I get my mother jammed up. Even though it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. But I was like, uh, fuck. So I just went down there. But uh, my my sister, God bless her, Diana, she um, she had cancer. She's a survivor. She had it twice. She's only 36, by the wow. way. Wow. God bless. That sucks. But there's a silver lining in it. She gets the vapes. Nice. <laughs> I, got, I got use of, yeah, she had one vape. Um, so which you, sucked, you, you were stealing... Smoke. No, I don't. You were stealing her medication. I don't don't smoke either. Andrew definitely does. He's a hippie. Once in a while. Yeah. So uh, the vape, it's not the same, but it's still, it was better than nothing. I heard it's stronger. I know it's it's big in high school now. I I really enjoy the whole, the stink of it, man. On my fingers. uh, (laughs) I just, there's something about it. The vape doesn't give that to me for some reason. But I just thought I'd mention that because I don't want to embarrass you guys thinking like, um, you know what the fuck is wrong with this guy, man? Really <laughs> it is what it is. So um, we got you here finally, Tommy. And uh, when we came up with this idea to do off uh, police off the cuff, uh, you were Bill mentioned you like right away that you thought you'd be a great guest. Um, I had a chance to watch your Top Cop. Mm-hmm. All right, you had an episode. What year was that? The uh, the incident took place in eighty four. I was a rookie of two man. years. The Those, episode was, uh, Jesus, I think it was 91. 1991. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that was yeah. later, huh? They did a good job of recreating it. They did. They, they had to make some adjustments, uh, camera angles, all that good stuff, expenses, uh, but they did. They really did. But 84, those were good years. The 80s, they were weren't good. They? they were oh good my years. God. I could tell by they the hair in the video. Good. Right? Great nice hair, quaff, man. You right? still look good. Yeah, you still look good. Thank you. Thank but you. Back in there, if you have a chance, uh, ladies, especially if you're out there, um, you want to check out the episode of Top Cop. What channel was that on? It was a uh, Channel 2. It was oh, a f- really? Two, yeah, prime time show. Oh, it was like uh, Friday night. Well, you must like have been famous for o'clock. a while. Yeah, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, there's Absolutely. 15 minutes of fame. Actually, it almost never happened. It almost never happened. Why? Well... You know, ball breaking in the precinct, right? Uh-huh. So like, the first time I see the show, I'm on meal down at three two. Friday night, the show comes on, the reenactments of you know police stories, and uh, you know, good show. And about a uh, month later or so, I get a call on the TS. Yeah, this is a CBS show, Top Cops, Sonny Grasso, Jacobson production. We're interested in doing a shooting from 1984. Of course, I look to my left, look to my right. All right. Who who is this? Uh-huh, you know, yeah, this of course, is, of course. So long story short, four times later, they're like, "Please, please don't hang up." You know, this is oh, this really? is for real. He's and, calling you at the command. Yeah, they call me at the command. It's the only number they had. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, where did you work at the time when they called you? Three two. Oh, you were in the three yeah, two, huh? Three, two, the yeah. Tomb of Gloom was Garden known spot. back then, right? Yeah. So you were already like uh, almost ten years removed from that incident. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Well, wow. all right. So let's go back a little bit. Um, what year did you graduate from, well, from the police academy? Well, I was 1982. 
So that was, was the three thousand class, right? 3, yeah, close, cops? close, right. How old were you? Twenty years old. Oh, Fresh so you face, were one of the twenty baby, year old yeah, guys. Yeah, twenty years old. They didn't take you to buy beer. They didn't. No. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's, but, uh, you know, oh, so you used to do that, right? That they used to, you were in the academy and you were 20 years old. You were still but too PMD young to buy beer. Would use you to, but you, know, you were yeah. a cop. Yeah. Right. So they used to put you and you used to get some time. How do you feel now? You think 20 years old is too early to come on the police department? You know, I don't think so. I, I think, uh, you know, I, w- I was kind of, I was blessed. You know, I went to NSU 6, which was the 283225. Uh, and um, we were kind of thrown to the wolves. You know, we were uh, we were put out on foot posts, and uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, we were my first foot post was uh, in the two eight, and you ever see the show The Walking Dead? Yeah, yeah. it was that. It was the thousands, elephantitis legs with the heroin and, and all thousands, that. Thousands yeah. and thousands of junkies between 116th and 119th Street and Eighth Avenue, and our only uh, job was to move them. Yeah, uh, just, just keep just, them around. Just keep them moving. Was that, that was that pre pressure pressure point or right? It was pre pressure point. Yeah. yeah. So of course, when we went to the two eight, me and my uh, must have been they don't tw- move too fast. The junkies. They don't. They don't. No, <laughs> you know, you, like you, it's, it's an eyesore. Easy to catch. It's yeah. an eyesore. Yeah. 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 Like you hate seeing it, especially if you live there. Yeah. But they really don't. You know, when they're high, they're not moving around too no. much. Nah, pretty much nah. chill. They're not. Fu- they're not messing with shuffling you. and yeah. Just, you know, they're in the same spot <laughs> Do, doing the nod and the lean. <laughs> you know, I got a, my grandmother lives in Washington Heights, and I went up there to. Um, and I go see her from time to time. I get her some groceries, whatever. So I'm out getting groceries. And well, I'm going to go into the store. There's a guy there. He looks like he just got out of jail. And uh, he's grilling everybody. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to get into it with this guy. Because he's going to look at me. I'm going to look at him. And the next thing you know, uh, I was like, regret. I was like, and then he kind of sort of nodded out. <laughs> and I was you like, oh, all shit, about he's a junkie. This <laughs> is great. <laughs> so I snuck into the store. I got whatever I had to get. And I, I was opening the door on my way out. And then I saw that it, he had come too. Like now he's grilling everybody again, you know, and he's trying to scare people and he's like getting in their face. And as I closed the door and I waited. And then like two minutes later, he nodded out again and I walked out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of sort of what it's like, right? Yeah, yeah it is. It you got to just duck and dodge yeah. these junkies. And this is 1984. 80, 82. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 82. 82. Yeah. Was, was this pre-AIDS or AIDS was just about This was pre-AIDS. Yeah, this is pre-AIDS, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. This is like the beginning of crack. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it was. Crack came a couple of years later. Yeah. But, um, you know, we were throwing, I'll tell you, we were a young group. We were a really young group, throwing the 2 eight, and they hated us. You know, we had this lieutenant there. Uh, Who hated you, the police? Oh, oh no, the they, no, the, the, the bosses. Because oh, we, no, we, were, we were clueless. You know, we were absolutely clueless. Uh-huh. So we kept busy. You know, we tried to, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to um, to Italy, to um, uh, Flo- uh, Florence. There's these mopeds and Vespas. Uh-huh. Yeah, so yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. Rawr, rawr, yeah, yeah. So to keep busy, just to do something, there was about a thousand mopeds that uh-huh. came upon came onto the streets, right? Okay. These, so these kids zooming up and down. So we'd stop them. Nobody had a license, an ID. No one had paperwork for it. So before you knew it, there were like 30 mopeds taking up space in the two-way garage. <laughs> oh, yeah? Right? Which made the lieutenant insane, right? They, they Absolutely. don't like you when the, you vouch for that stuff. No, no, no. He, he, was, he was the rookie monster, yeah. man. He, he hated us. He uh-huh. was just... Always honest. Did he tell you to stop taking those freaking yeah. mopeds? Well, what we did, what we did, we, we actually raised it up one because he was just breaking up walls so much. So uh, I'm with a little Spanish partner of mine, and he goes, he, he, we stopped this kid, and he goes, uh, yo, man, where's your, where's your GG Bobo card for this uh, for this moped? And the guy goes, he goes, what do you mean, GG Bobo card? He goes, so I, a light bulb goes off. Uh-huh. I go, I got this. Uh-huh. I go, listen. You got to tell all your friends and everybody we stop, we go, you got to walk the moped into the station house. You got to ask for this lieutenant, this, this uh, rookie monster. Oh and he's got to inspect your moped and he's got to issue a Gigi Bobo card so you can <laughs> run up and down the street. Right? Uh, so, you know, and I go, don't leave until you get that Gigi Bobo card. Uh, so we had 20, 30 guys a night coming in, walking in their mopeds seeing this lieutenant. <laughs> so so he, he finally, he called a truce. He goes, hey, what the fuck is it with this Gigi Boa card? Bullshit, who's up to this? So he chilled from that Two on. can play the game, Two, right? Yeah, yeah. Cops are great, man. That's, that's, oh, that's awesome. The Gigi Bobo card. 
You know, those guys are intimidating too. Like they really are. Like when you're driving around up there in the west side or even in the east side a lot, you see the upper east side, west side, uh, Harlem there. They come by and they're like 15, 20 kids on bikes. Some kids got dirt bikes. Some kids got the quads. Yeah. And they're going, they're flying down the street. And uh, they want to right? antagonize you. Yeah. Yeah. I was with my partner. We were doing warrants at the time. And we get to a corner where the light. And we're in an unmarked van. Um, like a, one of those 12 passenger vans and they pull up next to us and it's like wah, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. and then one of them looks over and makes us they're like oh shit those are cops so they're like yo they start pointing cops cops and wah, they're all whizzing around the corner and they're like waiting on the next corner so we can we can chase them and we were on a warrant hit we didn't give a shit so we just well, yeah. fucking going <laughs> have at it <laughs> yeah but it, it is intimidating though the way they drive around the neighborhood like that well they pop wheelies how did you even stop oh, yeah, I right. guess you just gotta grab one right oh yeah you know they were on the sidewalk they, these were kids and they were mopeds they weren't those uh, those uh, the crotch rockets yeah, yeah, yeah no, these, these are just dirt mopeds bikes. Yeah. yeah those are so uh, so you're in the 2 eight. you're in NSU it's 1982 you got the great hair yeah beautiful uh, were you, hair were you single or married at the time I was single yeah yeah yeah. Did that work out for you? Yeah, no, yeah not in Harlem. No? <laughs> not in Harlem. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the blue magnet. The blue magnet. Yeah. When you went on a yeah. detail, yeah. Yeah, it worked out, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure it worked out somewhere. <laughs> you, I must, especially when you're young and you're in uniform like that, man. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was living in Manhattan, going yeah. to clubs. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. what? I wanted to ask you about that because this is something interesting. Um, your dad, because from when we're watching the Top Cop, you mentioned that you lived on 72nd Street over there in between 1st and 2nd Avenue, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right on corner first and yeah. he mentioned that your father was a, a super uh, like a building manager correct uh, yeah. of a building there yeah. well so was my stepfather is that too really whereabouts yeah. uh 54th and uh second okay yeah so yeah. i'm very familiar with that with that uh you know what that means you know mm -hmm. you get to live in the city but you kind of sort of blue collar yeah building yeah you're rich. it's probably a doorman building right? doorman building 24 7 uh luxury high rise was your father off the boat no no, no he was like six generation oh okay yeah, yeah. You know, what's interesting, a lot of people thought that Robert Chambers, they called him the preppy killer. They thought that he came from a family with money, but his father was a super. That's true. That's his mother true. was a nurse, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. his father. That's the reason why they were living there. Even though he looked, he had the preppy look. He had the haircut. He, had the high, he looked like a preppy kid, but he, didn't, he wasn't like a money kid either. For our listeners, you know, you take it for granted they know who Robert Chambers is. He's the guy who killed a girl named Jennifer Levin. I think it was in the... Central Park. What year was that? 88, maybe 90? Uh he yeah. strangled her, and uh, they called him, nicknamed him the preppy murderer because he was a good-looking kid that went to a prep school. And his yeah. life after he got convicted, I think he got convicted of manslaughter one. Mm -hmm. He got five to 15. He did the full 15 because he couldn't stay out of trouble, trouble in prison. Yeah. He got out, and he, they, he got A1'd by somebody. He sold A1 drugs to mm -hmm. some narcotics he's in for the rest of his life. Yeah, he was a drug addict. Yeah. That's what yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny, though, like you had Super Sons. What's the matter with us? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we had Something the, happens to Super Sons. We had the best of both worlds, I think. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, so it's 1982. You're in NSU. And then um, well, that, 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 that happened, um, the Top Cop. Uh, situation. Well, let's start from the beginning. What year was that when that happened to you? You're two years on the job, right? Correct. Correct. So well, you're you're still, you know, you feel I'm, like you've been on the job forever. No, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm a rookie. I'm you think clueless, you know everything now? Yeah. So you weren't head begging out yet? Not, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not yet. So you're going to well, the gym with your buddy? I was going to the gym with my buddy Frank Rocco. Uh -huh. Yeah, nice uh, Italian kid from Bensonhurst. Uh huh. So uh, is he on the job too? No, no, he's a lawyer. Oh, okay. He's a lawyer. Well, yeah, he did. He did well. As a yeah. matter of fact, he got a job as a lawyer for Pepsi. How he got that job uh -huh. was at the end of the interview. They said, "Tell me the most exciting thing that's ever happened to you in your life." And he told that story. And he told that story. Oh, and they go, fun. "Oh that's my great. god!" So that's great. Yeah. That's great. That's a great story. So well, your, your friend picks you up uh, in his car. You're going to the gym. Mm -hmm. What happens? A uh, parking spot opens up on the block, so we uh, we pull up and get it. I get out of the car and I hear these gunshots, rhythmic gunshots. Yeah, most distinct shot, it distinct sound in the world. Yeah, when, you, you know, get that when you're, you know. Once you start going to the range and you're shooting on a regular right. basis, you hear gunshots. Yeah. Yeah. You know yep. exactly what that sound yep. is. It's not yep. firecrackers. The right. are going. Right. So you hear the shots. So I hear the shots. I go to him. I go, damn. I go. I go. Fight. Those are gunshots. He goes. It, you know, this is the Upper East Side. It's not Harlem, Tom. Uh -huh. I go. You, you know, you it, definitely not. Like you're uh -huh. wrong. So I w w look down the block and I see. Uh, I see this guy in a trench coat uh, throwing shots in a window. 
All right. What it was was a uh, it was a first floor apartment that was converted into a tailor shop, and he'd do the transactions through the open window. Wow. So he just stopped shooting, turned towards me, started walking, and put the gun in his waistband. So I pulled my gun. It was actually the day I, I was at the range the day before. So. So uh, you were well tuned. I was yeah. well tuned. <laughs> tuned up. Actually, it, it ended up being like the for a long time the longest shot by a thirty eight chief in uh, in the department. That, that's an amazing shot. Yeah. I mean, just to hit someone in that you know that vicinity. Yeah, it was like a, you know twenty yards, wow. 20, 25 yards. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the shot. that's the tough that's a really shot. When you're shot. at the range, it goes seven, fifteen, and then it's a but twenty five. Right, this is a two inch. Yes, he has. He has yeah. a two inch yeah. chief. Hit, yeah, hitting yeah. anything with that freaking yeah. uh, the two inch. That's what I call my dick. The two inch thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> hitting anything with the two inch thumbnails. <laughs> uh, yeah, this it's is tough. A, this is a family <laughs> show. Yeah, twenty five feet out, man. That's 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 yeah. that's the tough shot. Yeah, it was. It, 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 you didn't think about it, you know? Uh -huh. So he sees me, he walks past me, he ignores me. But then, you know, I'm saying, you know, police drop your gun, stop, whatever I was saying at the time. And sure enough, like in slow motion, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on him, dead focused, tunnel vision. And he slowly reaches into his waistband and he kind of, I'm telling him, I'm saying to myself, I go, man, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And sure enough, he comes around. Just when he starts turning, a friend of mine's younger sister walks out of the building. All right, this guy, John Otis, his younger sister, about 10 years old, walks out of the building and says, hey, Tom, hey, he sees me squatting with a gun and goes to wave at me. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy's still turning around, coming to, coming to draw on me. And uh, I'll tell you, hero of the day was that doorman, doorman building. He sees what's going on. He was a, he was a Spanish guy from the Bronx, real street savvy, nice guy. Mm -hmm. And he went and he grabbed her right out of the line of fire. Great. Yeah, so he, he let two rounds go, I let two rounds go, and I go, fuck. I go, I missed him, man. Because he turns, he starts running, right? Didn't flinch, didn't move a muscle. I start going after him. Now, people, you know, it's, it's like four or five in the afternoon. It's like uh, people incredible. people coming home from, you know, 70 second, first yeah. and second. Oh, it's busy. Yeah. Busy, yeah. Yeah. busy. Yeah. It's like people, 10, 15 people, people walking at a time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So they, they're coming out from everywhere. They're walking down, getting off the train, the bus, whatever. And I'm screaming at them. I'm like, you know, police, you know, and they think it's a movie. They think it's a movie. They, they, it's <laughs> like, right out of a they, movie. They, yeah. They're like moving, yeah. but they're, it's, you know, it's The New reality York. hasn't hit them yet. It's New York, so they're unimpressed. Like, oh, oh, just a guy running with a gun right, saying, right. you know, you know, get out of the way. <laughs> um, so the guy turns right on second. Just then, my brother comes walking around with two, two, uh, two bags of groceries, right? Just like. Right, in, right into the line of fire again. And he's like, oh, shit, what's going on? I said, listen, call 911, tell them what I'm wearing, you know? So I don't, I don't get shot. That tell them what I'm wearing, tell them I'm um, chasing a guy with a gun, and, uh, you know, he ran north on second. So my, my brother you know, starts running, drops the groceries, falls on his face, gets up, <laughs> <laughs> scampers off. So I, I remember, you know, I, I grew up on the block. We used to play cops and robbers, shoot them up, guns, we used to call it, on, on the street. So, I, I, you know, when you immediately turn the corner, there's a delivery entrance for a D'Agostino supermarket, right? It's a recess where they took their deliveries. I go, you know how many times I'd like shot my brothers or my cousins in the face hiding? Real the, kid games. Real kid games. Uh, yeah, 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 not these yeah. bullshit it's, games oh, these kids yeah, play today, yeah. man. We're talking shoot them up. We had plastic guns that look like guns. Absolutely. You know, we Metal. had caps. Yep. Remember they used yep. to make a noise? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Taking the chances. They were die, die cast metal. That's you can, right. You yeah, can, yeah. You know, Same color. Two everything. use of a weapon. You know, you want to see one way, there's another. <laughs> remember that red circle thing yeah, with little yeah. caps in it you used to put yeah, in there? And they go, pop, yeah. pop, yeah. pop. <laughs> All right. So you that, you remember the area. You I remember the area. So I, so I go, uh, let me not just barrel around the corner. So I jumped in the street. I was using some parked cars for cover, and I, I saw that he wasn't hiding there. I go, he wasn't that far ahead of me, so he he, he ducked into the supermarket. Mm. Now, the supermarket's packed. It's, you know, it's it's a major, major supermarket. So I'm waiting for backup. 19 precinct rolls up, you know, and uh, most scared I've ever been in my life. Because this guy get drops behind the car, and he is squeezing the trigger. He's like, drop that fucking gun, or I'm going to kill you. And I'm... Go for my shield, and I remember I dropped my shield. 
when I fired because I used well, both uh, hands. I used both hands when I opened fire. So I dropped my shield. It was laying in the concrete somewhere. So I had no ID. And this guy was, he was hyped, man. I swear to God, I thought he was going to waste me. He really was. <laughs> he was, he was really on edge. So uh, I gave him my tax number. I go, listen, I'm working at 3 2. I gave him my tax number. So he realized, right. you know, I was a cop, right? Told him what went on. So we go into the supermarket, aisle at a time. Up and down, nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't know if you're looking for a guy, but there's a dead man in the pl- in the midsection. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, sir, excuse me, officer. I hate to bother you. <laughs> this guy bleeding out. <laughs> He's not a deer either. He's a man. <laughs> in produce. This, this, this guy screaming in produce right now, holding on to his gut. Clean up in aisle five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... Uh, so sure enough, he does. He finally collapses in about so five, you hit him. five hours. Old. Yeah, what, I, one I of those two shots hit him out there. Both of them hit him. Okay. Both That's amazing. Hit him dead center wow. chest, out the back, and hit him in the hip. Wow. And, but uh, like I said, I thought I missed. And how many rounds did you fire? Two. Wow. Yeah, two. It's pretty wow. damn good. That's great. Yeah. It's <laughs> two the for two man. It's yeah. the uh, the great training at Rodman's I Nike guess so, firearms man. tactic session. I even mean, NYPD. Even David I didn't you, hit man, the I, know it's, the I live in the Bronx, <laughs> and I know it's going to be a horrible day out. I don't have to look out my window. I don't have to check the weather. I know it's horrible out when I hear that pop, 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 yeah. pop, because I live right by the range. Okay. Yeah. And for, they're always out there in the worst weather. Yeah. They're out there. That's yeah. how you know it's a horrible yeah. day. Yeah. And it's actually good in a way because it yeah. teaches you how to shoot under any, uh, all environments because that's what you're going to do in the street. Yeah. You're, it's not going to be mm-hmm. a perfect day. Were you a, a real good shot uh, at the range? I, you know what? I, I I grew up with guns. Okay. Yeah, I so you up. were an excellent shot. I, I, Did, I didn't was. Didn't you hear what he told yeah, you before? They I used was. to play, what was that game? Yeah, but that strange. doesn't make you yeah, an excellent <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, my dad. Could. I always yeah. sucked. I, I sucked at the range. I was like an 80 <laughs> shooter, you know, like 82. I was just getting by, you know. No, I used to shoot my hundreds. But then Holy again, it's, it, no, I, no, I swear to God, I'll show them to you. I kept every single yeah, he one. Kept his <laughs> he brings them to the comedy it's, it's, shows. All you got to do is when show. you get a 10, you just add a zero to yeah, it. Yeah. No, I shot pretty good. But also you're at the range though and you get a chance to take your time. Tom, don't yeah. tell me you were one of those guys that had like the big hole in the middle. Of the no, 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 no. I, I didn't those know. guys have to no. go. They need well, psych my, services. My, my partner yeah. was like that. Or in the, oh, in the eyes. Remember they were giving out the, the marksman medals for a short time? So you had to get the 100, right? And he was taking his time. This is all he wanted. It. Like right, he right. was, he was going to get a nickel grouping, right? I don't know, but he made the mistake of shooting next to me. So <laughs> I was like this. He was like ninety nine, and I went this. Reached over, <laughs> boom, and let Fuck one fly. <laughs> <'Cause> you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> no metal for him. No, so. I've seen guys at the range that just had a, a burned out hole yeah. in the middle, yeah. and I was like. That's a sick. Yeah, fight. but a lot of yeah. those people are military too. <laughs> they could be, or else yeah. they just practice thirty-two times a week and sleep with their gun under their pillow. I was okay. like the average guy. I went to whatever it was. The twice a year we had to go to the range. Yeah. That's when I went. Right, right. By the end, I was hooked, so I can go on the captain's relay, and that was the best day ever. <laughs> yes, you'd go yeah, there. That was great. Literally, I, by the, you're in the middle of your coffee. They're like, "Oh, you got ready, guys? Ready to come in?" I'm like, "Come on, I'm having. Can we wait a second? No, and you're going right to the range. The range you shoot. And you meatball, out, yeah. Oh. If you get the really good relay, they'll clean your guns for you too. That's right. That's right. Now, that's the high. That's the big. The, I didn't get that one, but no. I heard about that one. <laughs> <laughs> So the, both those two shots hit him, man. Both them shot, yeah. And you're two years on the job. You, uh, now, what was the initial shooting over? What well, I did, we didn't know, okay. right? So when we found him uh, collapsed in the aisle, you know, I ran over. I, I, I told one of the 19 precinct cops, going, you know, cuff him up. The guy looks at me like I have two heads. Yeah. I go, no, cuff this guy up. And then, you know, I'm right. not kidding. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it took a little while. And so we toss him. There's no gun, man. And one of the cops goes, oh, man, I thought you said he had a gun. Oh. And I was like, now my, my heart right, right, drops course, to my chest. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, he did, he man. I'm, at I'm, me. I'm yeah. telling you, he had a gun. Uh, so it took, a, it took about five minutes. He dumped the gun behind some boxes a couple of aisles away. And uh, so they recovered the gun. Because at this point right now, you, you still I, don't know that there's two dead bodies. I, I don't. Back I don't. Dry cleaning. So, I, so, I, so I send, uh, I, I, I tell one of the cops, I go, listen, send, send the sector down to 315 East 72nd. I go, he's throwing shots in the tailor shop window. So... They run down there, and it was uh, two people dead. You know, uh, shot the woman, eight, uh, shot the man eight times, the tailor, wow. and a woman uh, four times. And uh, 
And this guy was, was it a bad like uh, ironing of his clothes? You, you, <laughs> what was you know what? I got you. Gonna hear a fascinating story. We couldn't figure it out for year for 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 a long time. Motive, what, you mean? Motive. Yeah. So you know what it was? He was a uh, a valet at the Turkish embassy. What does that mean, valet? He he kind of. Uh, Handled the diplomatic's uh, affairs and clothing, and you know, they're kind of a man Friday assistant, okay. right? Okay. So um, that's where he got the nine from. He took it from he took it from the Turkish embassy. So the woman he shot was Turkish as well, and she was renting an apartment uh, in one of his buildings. He was a successful guy. He's mm-hmm. uh, and. Um, so being a valet probably pays good then. Yeah, you th- I think he did very well. Yeah, he did very well and whatever investments he had. But well, how did you just graduate to a double murderer from... Well, that's... Yeah. We could we were, we were really racking our brains over it. Yeah. A lot of d- detective work went into it. Yeah. And um, DA squad was involved. And uh, so finally, it, it's, it, it's pretty interesting is he's Turkish, she's Turkish. The tailor was Turkish as well. And they had struck up a friendship not a romance, but a, just a friendship because she passed him going to work every day. The so, shooter and, and the girl? The the, uh, the tailor and the girl. Oh, okay. So the shooter was asked her on dates a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. She owed the shooter money, some money for rent, or was behind in rent payments. But he was affronted that she would spurn him and take up a relationship, what he per- he perceived as a relationship with this tailor. Mm-hmm. So he just lost it. So she he was, was saying no to him when he was asking her out. Right. So it was an honor crime. It was a, they were all Turkish Muslims. And he took it as a personal affront. It was an honor crime. Well. That's why I did it. So back in 84, no one had any idea about Sharia Shia, uh, Shia law mm-hmm. or... Um, of course, jihad was never even a, a you know. A, was it a thing? So he's a thing. valet with a lot of money. He has businesses and owns apartments and stuff. And, and he, this guy's just a tailor. So you, yeah. How dare you? How dare you? Yeah. How how dare she? Yeah. So it was uh, it was pretty interesting. So um, yeah, I mean, and there was no doubt he wanted both of them dead. I mean, the amount of rounds. He oh, he was yeah. he was um, yeah, he was a man possessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He yes. probably saw the two of them laughing together, and she, you give me the cold he, shoulder in this tailor. That was a Turkish yep. diss. Turkish yeah. dish. Yep. <laughs> I can't even say I'm that. So <laughs> say that. <laughs> Turkish diss. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know, though. Yeah. It's good stuff. Don't to know mess with street. a Turkish guy, yeah. man. If he asks you out, do it. Go what does your ex boyfriend do? <laughs> Push it. Don't worry. I got it. <laughs> so, uh, so you make the. This is a. Uh, this is. This two years on the job. Two years on the job. Two years on the job. And you got to kill. Yeah. You got to kill. That's well, I, like... I'll tell you what, what, what shook me is. Uh, what happened after that then? Well, I'm sitting at the DA squad and, uh, no, I'm sorry, the 19th squad. And um, Eddie Mahoney comes in. He's the uh, Manhattan North trustee from the PBA. And Are he you off probation in. yet? I am. That was when it was a year probation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he walks in and he goes, well, who's involved with the shooting? I go, me. He goes, why are you so frigging calm? Mm-hmm. I go, I, I don't know. You know, I'm just, it, it's over. Mm-hmm. He goes, well, you know I'm that fucking Irish. <laughs> 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 I'm Irish. <laughs> he goes, uh, he goes, you know that bullet went through that guy and hit a guy in the arm like 50 yards away. 50? No yards. shit. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's unbelievable yeah. how much these fucking yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't 50 yards, but it was down that the was, That he was, was down a power pack chief. I <laughs> he think was, it was yeah. a good. <laughs> two, that Hot rounds. Never underestimate the two inch snub that, that, yeah. that was a heat That's what she said. <laughs> A heat-seeking round he had in that goes. <laughs> so anyway, the guy took it really well. He goes, as a matter of fact, it was just a bruise on his arm. Oh, so it didn't penetrate. It didn't penetrate. Wow. It was just a bruise. But I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, he is. This is just. So the city st- paid him shit. like a half a million He bucks. said, I'm so honored to be part of this. I'm there so was, there was, that you shot me. That was, <laughs> <laughs> can I keep the bullet and to wear it around my with, neck? To get hit with the round that went through that Turkish guy yeah, is like yeah. something. I'll yeah, believe it, man. He was, he, was, uh, he was a really good guy. He didn't pursue it in any way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. Surprising. That's when there were still good people around. Wherever you are, man, this, this uh, sympathy is for you, my friend. So what did that, did, did that do anything for your career? You know what? I, it did. Um, 
I got the... Uh, you were like a superstar when you got back to the command. Well, you know, it was, it was Ed Koch's backyard, you know, so yeah. uh, that was... Upper East the mayor's side. mansions over there. Yeah. You got yeah. you got the combat cross for that. I right? did. How many years did. did it take you to get the combat cross? The next uh, eighty five. Oh, okay. It's eighty five medal day. Yeah, cool. But um, do you know a lot about the history of the combat cross? Isn't there only a couple of hundred in the history of NYPD that they've given out, or is there much more than that? No, now? I think there's there's only a couple of hundred. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a really yeah. prestigious medal. To yeah, get, it right? really is. Yeah, it's I mean, quite just an the, honor. Just the name, the combat cross. It's, yeah. You know. I almost want to cry as I say that. <laughs> you're two years don't, don't on the job, and you practice all this stuff when you're in the academy, this, that, and the other, and it, it almost seems like it's never going to happen. And, and it, it's just oh, especially one second, especially going on, to the gym. On, going to the gym on your on your street. The yeah. day after you went to the range. Yeah, day after I went to the range. This guy didn't know what hit him, bro. Literally, yeah. <laughs> got hit twice from 25 feet away. It's amazing. So, so you I, get back to the command, you're a superstar now, right? I, I, not so much. You know, it was, it, you know, for a hot second, right? You had 15 minutes of fame, yeah, yeah. right? So I was, um, I was doing patrol. I was on patrol. I was very active, you know? Um, who, was your, who was your CO back then in the 3 2? Ooh, this is a tough one. Timony? Or was no, it? no, no. It was, uh, I want to say. Salvaggi? Wasn't Salvaggi. Salvaggi came in later as chief of borough, and uh, I thought he was a three-two CEO also. Not when I was no. there. Not when oh, I was okay. there. Uh, really escapes me. Okay, escapes me. Not but, important. Not important. <laughs> what are you in a sector now? I'm in a sector. But what happened was I ended up getting the Daily News Hero of the Month, which was a very prestigious daily yeah, news. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and uh, having lunch with Ed Koch. And Eddie Mahoney again, uh, where do you want to go? So we go to, we go to lunch and he brings in like the CEO of street crime and the CEO of OCCB is there and Ed Koch is there and, uh, Patty Burns, the who's who, right? And, uh, tomorrow you're going to be in street crime. Here's the, here's the application. Right. I go, well, somebody gets in my ear and goes, you want to go to street crime? It's a, it's a dead end, right? You're not going to get shield from it. Right. So- Push for OCCB. So mm -hmm. at the luncheon, I go, well, you know, Eddie, maybe I'd rather go to narcotics. And he was hurt, you know. Yeah. So uh, I stepped on my own dick, you know. Basically, that, that was the end of it. They were, you know. They didn't care where you wanted to they go. They didn't care where that. I wanted You're to go You're three, two that. for life That's now. right. That's right. It felt that way. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. So you know, it's amazing politics. the way contracts go, though, too. If you just Well, you don't know. Someone, You're two years right? on the job right, right yeah. now. Yeah. How are you supposed to know how the job works? I mean, well, in hindsight... Yeah. You, you know what I said? I said, listen, I got a lot to learn. Like, I'm not ready for street crime. These guys right. were legends, man. Right, right. These guys were like pulling metal off the street like nothing and shooters and, right. you know, hardcore police work. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I got a lot more to learn yet. Right. So I didn't feel I was ready. Uh, that was another reason. But you were in one of the best training grounds for to be a, an anti-crime cop. Oh, well, so you stayed in the amazing. three, too? I, yeah, when I went to the three, too, yeah, I, I'll tell you, I went, I went there with uh, when we broke up NSU. I went to the uh, three, two, or maybe about six or seven other cops, young cops from the academy. And I remember the first orientation tour, day tour. We were there for about two hours getting lectured. And boss comes in, he goes, you're all going in sectors. You know, you're all, you're, he goes, half the day tour took lost time. Because they probably couldn't have taken lost time for the last five years. Yeah, right. Right, so, there, was no, there, was, <laughs> there were no cops. Yeah. So uh, very first call... Um, homicide up in Sector Nora, stepping over a dead body, fresh, um, and no one saw anything. So welcome to I the know. three, two. Welcome to the world of... That night, I was put in squad nine, so that night I had to come back for a midnight. Now, if you had any idea in 82 what the midnight tour looked like, were these warriors, these old curmudgeons, I'll tell you, uh, nine out of 12 of them were Vietnam vets. In the Night of the Zombies. In the Night of the Zombies, yeah. Sour looking, yeah. sour, you know. You might uh, as well have shot it in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> it is, really is. It's those old time cops. Yeah. Tough, tough fuckers though, right? Tough. Yeah. I'll tell you, every, uh, nine out of 10 of them have a, have, a, have a combat cross. Some of them had two. So talk about, of course, they wouldn't, you know, piss in your mouth or your teeth were on fire because- you were a new jack. Right, you know, right. You were a rookie. You were a rookie. Trust they, yeah, right. absolutely. So uh, the whole thing was, a, you know, always proving yourself, always right, trying right. to fit in. You know, it was, uh, which is. So you went on midnights then? I, I went on midnights. It was the first week. 
Yeah, it was on midnight. It was the nine squad chart. Okay, yeah, all right. But that it was, was it was kind of people. a yeah. Oh, it was killer. That's it was killer. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people got, uh, caught heart attacks off of that chart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was it again? It was it, it was, was uh, two weeks of days, two week weeks of, of days, four to twelves, and a week of midnights. Correct. Right, right. And then it started all over again. And then days. Yeah, it's not good for your sleep pattern. Oh, it's, no, horrible. No, it's horrible. But you know, it was, it was good for the camaraderie, though, of a precinct. Because you got to work. Because you got to work with everybody. Everybody yeah. knew everybody. Now with day tours, four to ones, and uh, midnights, no it one knows each other. It broke up a lot other. of stuff. It no also created all those uh, people writing summonses and getting right, right. People, the people selling yeah. their soul to yep. get the, the day tour or yeah, whatever. Yeah, did a right. lot for destroying the camaraderie of a precinct. So, and, that, and the police department wanted that. I, I really believe that. Yeah. I don't think they wanted that camaraderie. No, it was dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it was dangerous. But I think it was the cops who were fighting to get rid of those tours, though, because it was killing them. Well, the PBA did. The PBA did, yeah. yeah. So yeah. In, the, in the end, why did they cave in? Because they figured, you know what, I don't worry. Oh, yeah, let, let it go. It's going to work out. Well, you know, back anyway. then a cop would retire and he'd live for about three to five years and die, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Overweight. Could, overweight. They smoked. Well, the sleep. They drank. The, you yeah. have to have a, a good sleeping pattern. Yeah. You know, and that destroyed. Now guys take care of themselves, you know. How long I want to live till I'm like 100. <laughs> uh, probably you about, will, man. You will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah about, a, about a year after the shooting, I went to, well, went to anti-crime. So and you f- did the, the nine, uh, what was this called? The scooter chart, right? Yeah, nine squad chart. Nine squad nine chart. Nine squad chart, yeah. Wasn't it called the scooter chart too? Or that was no, that was an NSU. That was that was, uh, scooter was a week of days, week of four to twelve. Okay, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Flop, right. Flop, so flop. And you had a piece of the weekend. Yeah, piece of the weekend. Off. Right. Yeah. And I guess you made enough collars to go to uh, anti crime. I did. I did. Yeah. They. Um, it was a bit of a fight though because they were putting. Uh, it, I was told they wanted to make it more the unit more um, diverse. So they were putting some people in who were actually. My last draw was they put this young lady in who. Um, had two with all two collars. And finally, I went into the CO, whose name I can't remember, all with right. my arrest folder. I go, sir, with all due respect, I go, uh, you know, I, I'd like to be considered for this position. So what he did was he made me a deal. I'd do a month of midnight crime with a female officer, and then I would be taken to the unit. And I ended up staying in anti-crime for a good, probably, Jesus, five years. Why did you that. have to take it for a month to show her? To it, it was a deal. I, I don't know what went through his mind. I guess just to give me a bone until he could assimilate me into the rotating crime unit. Mm-hmm. So might have been to, to show what to do. Yeah, you maybe. Know? Three maybe. two crime back then was rocking though, right? Lots we of guns, were, yeah. lots of robberies. Yeah, we were a lot of violence in that precinct, right? Sure is. So maybe she had to watch you to make sure you were good. But somebody you had somebody about to watch me. <laughs> somebody, you had the folder, though. Yeah, you had yeah, the folder. I'm yeah. just wondering that. That was a weird thing to do. You yeah, to work it was. It was. Did, yeah. with, but the crime was in midnight. So it was just the two of you working with the midnight tour? We were just uh, playing clothes on the midnight. Yeah. Two, yeah. Which like, is kind of right. reckless when you think about it. You didn't we have had a no boss? supervisor. No. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So. But eventually you got in. So yeah. You go street crime. A month later. You're loving life. Loving life. Loving life. In shape. In shape. Rocked. Yeah. Jack Rabbit fast. You know, it was great. <laughs> uh-huh. It was great. Yeah. Good crew. You know, we had uh, you know, we had, we had a we had an awesome crew. And you you're gonna have um Mikey O'Keefe here, right? Yes, yeah. So it was always a battle. He was one of them too? No, no, he was he was in a three four anti crime, but it was always you know, we're, we're always out doing Who's getting the most uh, hardware off yeah, the street, exactly. right? The 3-4, yeah. the 3-2. And I'll, I'll go on record right now and say we, we killed them <laughs> yeah. consistently. Yeah. I think the 3-2 was much busier than the 3-4 back then. The 3-4 started rocking years later. Yeah, I, I think um, before coterminality, before yeah. they did the reboundaries. Uh, well, yeah, um, with the 3-3. Three, three yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It was busy then. Tell us what the streets look like. You mentioned the junkies, right? You Are know what? still a lot of junkies now? No, I mean, not now, oh. but I'm just saying when you're in street crime. Is there still a lot of junkies out there or is it you know converting what? to uh, crack? Well, I'll tell you. I, I remember this. It's uh, one, one block was uh, kind of dedicated to heroin. Right, it was the uh, the Mad Monkey Crew. Right, they they handled they dealt smack on 144th Street. You know, uh, it was pretty much localized there. And then we're running around, and we're we're uh, you know we we weren't into the drugs. We were into the guns, right? Robberies. Right. That's all we cared about. And the drugs, you could, they were everywhere. You know, you, you throw somebody on the wall, and everybody was holding. Right. So you guys are driving around looking for guns. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we come across this substance one day. We this guy runs. We uh, you know we snatch him up, and he's got this little vial, 
with this looks like soap in it. I'm mm-hmm. like, what the hell is this? You know? And before you knew it, a week later, it was like on every damn corner. Crack over. The beginning crack of the came crack, yeah. Overnight. I know, it's true. Everyone, everyone was cooking up crack and yeah, and uh, dividing up territories, dividing up streets. giving corners. it away. I think that crack made it even more violent than heroin, right? It did. Yeah, heroin was controlled. Heroin right. was controlled by the mob. Right. Also, what it does to you. It's a short What does high. heroin do? You put, you're not out. Not out. Right. You go into a, you're a happy place. You're on crack, now you're Wyatt. Yeah. You're up. Yep. You're bouncing around. Crack attack. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you need know? more. And when you went to go get your heroin, they gave you a, bi- vi- a couple of vials. Of- no, try this out. Try this out. Mm-hmm. That's how they got you hooked on crack. Yep. They gave you a couple on the arm. You know, and anybody, anybody uh, could buy a little weight, cook it up, and make 10 times uh-huh. their money. Yeah. You know? So, uh yeah, I still haven't figured out how the math of that works because I was watching this other guy. He was uh, he was a crack dealer back in the day, and he was talking about how uh, how it makes it's worth the same amount. Or uh, I, I still can't understand it. You still had to buy coke and cook it. But I remember Freebase came out first. Yes. Then yes. that was when Richard yeah. Pryor burned right. himself up, mm-hmm. and then right there between that gap. And a free base and um, crack. There was this stuff on the street called bazooko. Bazooko was a paste, and it was all the remnants that was left over from uh, free base when they used to sell mm-hmm. free base mm-hmm. before crack. You could buy the bazooko, the remnants, and you could you get it just as high as you were free basing. But it was like another element to it for some reason. And he would also trip. You know, don't ask me how I know this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, heard, I knew some kids that were hooked on it. <laughs> One of those ki- kids were hooked on it for like three weeks. Yeah. It went from uh, somebody trying it, two bags, to the next, within two weeks, you were going and buying uh, 15 bags. <laughs> wow. Just for yourself. Yep. And that's how quick people get uh, hooked in the street on this stuff. And then crack came right after that. Yeah, it was crazy. And yeah. and, uh, and then the, the HIV uh, right? epidemic, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, and that was connected sort of to the heroin, too, because of the needles. And, Correct. You know, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. You know, the so 3 2 also is a very heavy duty political pr- precinct, right? Yes. Yeah, so the Abyssinian, Abyssinian Baptist, Baptist Church. Church right? There's a couple of mosques. Mm-hmm. So, besides the heavy duty crime, you were dealing with some heavy duty politics of New York City, right? Oh, absolutely. But tell us, tell yeah, us a little about that. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, as a. Um, well, I'll tell you later on, it was a big thing. We were, uh, we were forced to go to sensitivity training. Um, held by the pastor, and his name is Calvin Butts. Calvin Butts. How did I forget yeah, that? That's right. Yeah. So he was giving. He was coming in, giving us sensitivity training um, in the three two, and he pretty much had carte blanche, you know, to do what he wanted with with the uh, the cops there. Right. You know, he'd come in and address us any way he deemed was necessary. Um, yeah, very powerful man. But I, I'll tell you, we. We kind of just kept our nose to the grindstone. We really it seemed did. like the good you know? people in the three two actually like the cops there. They do. They you, do you, I, because they saw how dangerous that neighborhood was, and they looked upon you guys as you know. I, I, I'll, I'll never forget um, young cop going into a building on 140th Street uh, with a gun run, drug run, whatever it is. Now 140th Street between Seventh and Eighth was called. Uh, it was probably one of the most killingest blocks in New York. Homicide shootings. It was it was insane, right? Drugs. So um, I'm going into the building on the run, and this door cracks, and this 80 year old lady pokes her head out and goes, "She goes, officer, you know, can you help me?" I go, sure, ma'am. She goes, "They're dealing drugs out of apartments in here." And I go, I, "I can't go to the store, and I can't, I you know, I, I can't go get groceries, and, and I'm scared all the time." And kids don't play here, and kids can't go out and play on the stoop. And I had a kind of an epiphany then, right. and it was really, um, it was kind of a, a call to mission. Really was after speaking to that woman, and we kind of we made it our mission to uh, make a dent into the nonsense that was happening, to the the degradation and the, the crime and the violence. And we did that by getting to know the players making their lives a living hell right. and systemically locking them up, you know? Um, there were some big, big players that ran the drugs, though, in the 3-2, right? I mean, the organized players. That- yeah. Isn't that the precinct where the Harlem, the Harlem, when they talk about drugs? 
Well, uh, when they talk about that um, in the two eight, yeah. no, yeah, well, uh, well Sugar Hill the, Gang, yeah, uh, the big time names that they make movies about those Bonds, guys, uh, yeah, Nicky, Nicky Bonds, 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 yeah, that was before my time, yeah, was, but um, it, it is, it's the same command or at least uh, the command over, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. The three two is Harlem, yeah, it really is. That was the central part of Harlem. It yeah. was that's when people are talking about you know the Abyssinia Baptist Church, all the churches of Harlem, the mm-hmm. culture of Harlem. They're yeah. talking about the three two precinct. Yeah. So you you took it upon yourself with your uh, fellow, this anti crime yeah yeah we did we we and really started cared. cleaning up these buildings we we did our best we did our best we really did we we hit them hard we constantly hit them we came at them at different angles you know what um, were the search warrants in your shoe or were they <laughs> we did the uh, <laughs> yeah knock knock sledge yeah yeah yeah, yeah we, we knock knock who's there yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean how'd you go about it so so you got a team of with your team, and he says, "Okay, we're gonna." Let you pick a building out. How do you do it? You, you you grab a couple of guys off the street. You catch them a little dirty, right? Mm-hmm. You go, "This one's on me," but I want to know what's up. I want to know who's carrying the guns. I want to know what apartment's working. Mm-hmm. I want to know what apartment's pitching with with guns in it, mm-hmm. right? And so you, you get a uh, you get an informant network, not a registered right. Not official, right? A, a, a criminal informant network, a street network, mm-hmm. and uh, some great information. And we'd follow up on it, and we were very successful. Very successful. Old-fashioned police work. Old-fashioned, yeah. And a lot, a lot of people came to the 3-2 from New Jersey and other places to buy drugs, too, yeah, right? I, I think we had more white people buying drugs in 144th Street than there were in actual Bayonne. <laughs> you know, really, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Always. So these are drug crews that you're pretty much breaking up? Yeah, because that's where the violence comes from. Right, the drugs, especially with the crack, because they were they were fighting over territory, you know, and it came up quick and it came up fast, and just they were everybody wanted the prime spots, you know, the uh, you know the, the major intersections, you know, the, the best buildings with the best escape routes, and you know, it was a network. It was it was a network, different different crews. But, uh, and this is before social media. This is, thank God. So you had to close social God. media. Well, I mean, you could go on Facebook and pick out a whole crew yeah. where you couldn't back in the day. Yeah. And it happened, you know, that's, ex- I, I used to teach a course. I put together like a little slideshow on basically how to, what is Facebook and what is MySpace and what is Twitter? Because I was using it for comedy right. and for acting. Um, to network, get my shows out there. And these people that I was working with in the squad, they didn't have a clue. They're all old timers. Right. Uh, nobody was using social media that way or they didn't even know what it was. So I I would take their perp's name or the person they're looking for and put in social media and then that got around. So before you know it, I created this little course. I got into the training unit. Nice. That's how I got out of the squad. Yeah. But you guys were doing it without that kind of stuff. You know, you were doing it by street the names. The old fashioned way. The old fashioned way, right? Yeah. yeah. Going downtown, getting a, <laughs> digging a photo out, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> remember how, remember how long that used to take? I used yeah. to say, send a detective downtown. You lost them for the oh, day. Yeah. <laughs> for Lane East, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whoa, hop, whatever. Well, yeah. He's going. Nice you lost them for yeah, the day. A, you know, what are you going to do? You got to eat lunch. Yeah. <laughs> you take a slow ride downtown. Sarge, I'm going to go get a wet photo downtown. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Plus, he's tying up the car. Oh, man. Yeah. So, uh, so you guys put a nice little dent in it, right? We did. We did. We actually saw viable results. You know, you know something, Tommy? One of the things... and. Crime, I know, was like ridiculous during those years, but this was pre Comstat too. Oh. So really, fighting crime was something you were doing for yourself, and like the CEOs didn't have the pressure to keep the crime down that they have now. Now everything, every number, you know, they can wind up getting transferred if robberies go up, if this goes up, that goes up. Right. You guys were just doing it because you wanted to do a good job yeah. as a cop. Anyway, we like the overtime. Too. Yeah, all that too. Uh, of course, know, if there was no overtime, I don't think uh, anything would get right. done. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's true, but so we had uh, we had support. I'll tell you from the COs. We, we, we were in the, in the height of things, right? right? When we were doing, they were doing uh, close to a hundred homicides. It's a square mile, right? The three two, almost a hundred homicides a, a year, yep. not, not including shootings and stabbings and robberies and blah blah blah. So uh, to we, account for a hundred homicides a year in one square mile, yeah, yeah. Well, even bigger than that, I remember. I back it up a little bit. My first day in a three two was. Going to get a locker, right? Yeah, go to the fourth floor. They had one waiting for you, right? Stuff. 
Uh, no, I think we shared one for the first the two, oh, I three, they two had or three the, days. They already had the combat cross. cross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thomas Kennedy, combat cross recipient. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think we had like three to a locker because, you know, all those old times, man, they yeah, had four or five yeah, yeah. and some mystery lockers, right, and, right. you know, so it took a while for them to weed those guys out. And say, one of them had a case of beer. People retired 10 yeah, years, yeah. the locker's still in the exactly. tree too, you know. Exactly. <laughs> one of them had a case of beer, the other one had a, the, C, uh, the CI uh, paraphernalia. Right. <laughs> So what was uh, kind of unique about the 3-2, and the lieutenant says, oh, oh, wait a minute, before you go upstairs, look at that wall to your right. And there were pictures of all the cops killed in the line of duty. There were 13 on the wall, 13 cops killed in the line yep. of duty. It was the most cops killed per capita in the United States. So they redid the wall a couple of years ago, and, I, and they um, they actually uncovered a few more. I don't know what the final count is, and I'm not doing them any justice, but the uh, the war was exponentially increased. Right. Yep. So it's uh, it was very real, very real. Oh, yeah. Well, I was in homicide. We lived in the three two. Oh, we yeah. Were there all the time. Yeah. yeah. We were there all the time. And you know something? The squad was great. All the guys were tight. You know, the precinct was good. It's how know. long did you stay in anti crime? Well, five years, I think. And then what? So what happened? Chief Salvaggi happened actually. <laughs> uh, we were we were pretty we we had a lot of support from the uh, CO because we were producing, and he'd let us he'd go like, uh, hey uh, inspector, how about we stay a couple hours later past our tour for a stop the violence overtime, right? You know, just uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. You know, mm. so he, he was good, and we'd get search warrants. We were getting search warrants. We were we were actually registering CIs, and. Um, I, we ended up being like number one in the borough for our time. Number one, number two, whatever. But they consistently, never liked that shit. I yeah. hate that stuff. Yeah. So Salvaggi came in and said, "What the hell? Who the hell do these guys think they are? You know, doing uh, doing um, search warrants and racking police up police over really time. Who are these guys doing really good <laughs> police work and keeping crime down? Uh, you know, he had his job. In all fairness, I guess you know budgetary constraints, but." Uh, so they started reassigning every collar I made. Oh, man. They started reassigning my pickup gun collars, right? And so I said, I was the PBA delegate. I said, this, I go, this is enough. I go, I was getting burnt, I guess, and fighting the politics as well as, you know, doing the work on the street. Um, so I said, it's not enough. I'm, I'm going to go to the 115 with steady tours. Um, just reset. Closer right. to your house? Where'd you live? In Queens. So you moved to Queens? Yeah, yeah. So it got was- Got your own place? Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you I was married? married. I was married. Oh, then. you got married yeah, then? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I went, I went in 115. It was one of the best moves I ever did. You know, it kind of reset. It was 115 the, was a great precinct. The 110, 115? Yeah. I was in the Queens Task Force. Oh, oh we, Queens, used to, but, we used to call that the land of plenty folk. But Queens yeah. is a different world. Like, the, you know, the Queens Marines. There's still know, crime there. I'll tell you what. you know. So I, the first day I get there, they hook me up with the sector. This guy, he ends up, we, we, he knows uh, my family. Uh, actually, my, my brother You go back to patrol right now? I went back to patrol, right? I guess all I wanted. I go, okay. give me steady tours on patrol. Four to twelves? Uh, days. It was oh, days. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted four to twelves, but you really wanted to chill out for yeah. a while. I did. I did. But uh the nighttime is better than the one fifteen anyway. Yeah, well we, <laughs> oh my we, gosh. we it's uncharted territory. So I get <laughs> I get in the car with this guy and we hit it off like we were, we were meant to be together. This guy, Jimmy McCormick, man. Isn't that funny the way that could happen is you just click with what and it's just Notice that he had the, a, a Mick name, yeah, though, too, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, he had gotten thrown out of street crime. It has to work, though. Like, you have uh, to, when you click with a partner, it has to oh, work, yeah. man. And when it does, man, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You kind of sort of think for each other. You get that look in your eyes. You finish eye. each other's sentences. We're doing yeah, a four right? to four or yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you get to the 115, you find the, the best find partner the best ever. partner in the world, man. Uh -huh. Best partner. I love him like a brother. So we're driving around. We're filling each other out, right? And this guy... Big Jamaican guy standing in a in a hallway, you know, in a vestibule of a building, pouring rain out, right? And we're driving around six, seven times, and he's always out there, but he, he you know, we're looking at each other and go, Are we gonna toss this guy finally or what? Like, what's going on? You know? But we're feeling each other out. So anyway, long story short, we we grab him, he's got a gun, there's a little bit of a fight, and uh, and we actually ended up um, like some one uncharted territory. We uh I was there for four months, we pulled 37 guns off the street. Wow. Wow. And you know what? It wasn't like, it wasn't like, uh, 
back in the, in the three, two, where it was, you crack the door and it's off to the races. Mm-hmm. These guys weren't, used to be walked up on. Right. They weren't expecting it. Cops weren't stopping. Cop, cops yeah, weren't stopping. Weren't them. stopping them, so yeah. we had a, uh, we had a, uh, a free for all. And what did the precinct CEO think of this? He thought it was, uh, I think he was scratching his head to tell you the truth. Uh, he didn't I, know whether he liked it or yeah, did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember him like really either way. Yeah. Well, that's the downside uh, of not having Comstat because if you got two guys like this that are taking what is it, fifty-seven guns? Yeah, 30, 30, 37, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven guns. guns off the street, and you got Comstat, you can't wait to go. What? Yeah, call right, me, yeah, call I got, me. I got these two guys. <laughs> but, but but then again, the overtime, you know, the caught overtime. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You hit him hard. And you pray you know, to God. As a, when I as a boss, I hated that, but. My detectives would come in and, you know, they got 40 hours a month investigative time. And I Which had to, I had, but I had to control these guys because they were like kids in a candy store. They would come in and the first week they'd get the 40 hours. I was like, you fucks. Yeah. I go, what if something happens now? What am I supposed to do? And of course, we'd get like a double murder as soon as they uh-huh. had their 40. I had to send them home. Uh-huh. And I'm like, you're not helping me doing that. You're like two kids in a fucking candy store, <laughs> <laughs> you know, eating all the candy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they wanted you to just turn around and uh, tell the borough, and the borough said, all right, keep him. Hey, Sarge, you know, hey, there's nothing I can do. Uh, well, you know, I'm capped. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you got it. a detail yeah. coming up, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, audio courts and stuff. So you, your uh, CEO there, is he scratching his head? He's huh? scratching his head, yeah. I don't remember hearing from him one way or another. But you guys are on patrol doing this, right? On patrol. You're not yeah. even in crime yet. That's that's no. amazing. That's great. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Th- yeah. But you know, it just shows because you, you still got to handle of all it. your uh, your calls. You yeah, but it oh, just, yeah, of course, it shows course, you the politics yeah. of it, though. They, you know, yeah. They, oh, that's great that you got thirty seven guns, but you made six hundred hours overtime. Exactly. Or whatever. They don't want to hear about it. You yeah. know. But good police work is not free. We used to say that. That's right. Yep. So but now they what want happens? It free. Now what happens? Well, you know, I will tell you, it was pretty good because the, the Queens Marines. Uh, they knew we were busy. They knew what we were about. I was in the Queen's task force. Yeah, he was, my partner was too, uh, was Jimmy it? McCormick. Oh, did yeah, it start yeah, getting contagious to the other cops? Just like, hey, these guys could get guns. Maybe we can too. No, you know what it was? <laughs> it was like, can we stop the action? Like, do you have to go out at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning and get into a pursuit? Like, can't we have our coffee and bagels <laughs> right. first? Can we just ask you, like, yeah. please don't mess with anything till at least nine o'clock so, yeah. we, so we'll have our breakfast right, read uh, the paper but but they, I'll tell you some sectors were great we'd get hit with a DOA and they knew we were looking or yeah. uh, you know hunting well and, you loved having stuff like that I would have loved it because I don't want to make a collar every day or every month no, no they, they uh, <laughs> but some sectors would go pull up and go we got the deal yeah oh, that's yeah, great yeah, yeah, that's great so, yeah, you want to trade we'll yeah. take the DOA you know, some <laughs> guys are, some guys aren't hunters they're yeah. not hunters yeah. no matter what right well you always had guys who had families or had other things to yeah. do of course that day you yeah. got a baseball game you're yeah. coaching for your son yeah. I'm not looking today right you put three or four of those days together a week, every week, you're never looking. Yep. So it's great to have guys that are looking. They're, they're, those are the best guys to have. They used to say, you're looking or you're looking, looking. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I used I'm to sort of passively guy, looking. <laughs> like if, if, a, if a body winds up on the hood uh, of my car, like Ralph last yeah, week, right? Remember that story in the 2-3? Yeah. The guy dies on the hood of his car, shot. Yeah. The other guy, he's yeah. stabbed to death. Uh-huh. And he dies in Metropolitan. That happens to you. That was, that happened if you're to a magnet, that He was out on a date. Yeah. Yeah, he was out on a date. <laughs> that happened There's to guys him. like that, that this stuff just happens, it's magnet, man. man. Just be- it's always uh, with those guys. <laughs> I mentioned it last week. They, you opened up a door to a bodega. You're going to get a soda or something, and there's a robbery going on. Yeah. You know, and then the next guy just walks in there. Doo, 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 doo. So you guys are taking all these guns off the street. At some point, you're going to get promoted, though, right? I got promoted. Yeah. It, it did you ever, were you ever a detective? No. No. So you just well, became a sergeant? I was this close to becoming a detective, like, like a week or two away. They were fast tracking uh, active cops right. from anti crime up to the squad. Uh, I forget the acronym for the program. So um, it was probably RIP. I, no, it wasn't rip. It was, it was something was short lived, but uh, I don't want to give it injustice, give it the wrong name. But it was, uh, they were taking white shields to the squad. And uh, the was, active cop slash hook promotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> promotion. We'll, take, we'll take some active yeah. cops and we'll throw, take, yeah, throw hooks in, in between 10, the active hooks cops. In there. Yeah. 100 names is 20 hooks in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you were going to go up to the squad. I was going to go up to the squad. So it was so one, that, one fateful day when there was a big 1013 party happening at the uh, 
armory on 43rd. So we weren't looking, right? We were anti-crime. I was with this uh, new guy of about, I mean, senior guy, but he was uh, was new to anti-crime for about a week or two. So we're going to just chill. So we go in, check some 61s, go down to the lounge, and we're just going to low profile it to the end of tour. So the 3-2 lounge is this long, narrow, always dark, uh, the lights are always off, uh, lunchroom, two long picnic tables, bunch of uh, bunch of old beat up chairs and uh, a couch in the corner. In the far corner is always this like 13 inch TV that's always on. So we're there chilling. Um, my partner sits in one chair, puts his feet up on the, uh, the be- on the bench, and he takes his gun out and he puts it on his lap because he never wore a holster. He always waist carried it for whatever reason. Cow- why is that why it up? Cow- was that why cowboy, it up? Did he use yeah. the, the hanger? A lot of guys use the, <laughs> yeah, the hanger. Yeah, no, no, he just he just belly banded it. So uh, this uh, this other cop sits in the middle, and I'm on the far left side in the chair. We're we're, we're nodding out and sleeping, you know, relaxing. And all of a sudden, boom, I feel this pain in my hip, right? Now, my first reaction is I get up, I go, tell me that was a fucking firecracker. Because back in the day, uh, you know, firecrackers, you get a mat of, you'd be taking a shit, you get a mat of firecrackers sure. under, under the throw stall. Me throw, throw M80 into the Yeah, yeah, just the good, room. good, just clean for fun. fun. Just for <laughs> fun. Good, clean fun. <laughs> Smoke bombs were big. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. So he's standing up, he's got his gun in his hand, smoke coming out of the barrel, and he goes, who tied my fucking shoelaces together? Long story short, the guy in the middle thinks it's funny. He's got his feet up. He ties his shoelaces together. Oh, shit. Now, he puts his feet up on, on the ottoman. He gets up to take a piss, takes a step, hits the, hits the table, round goes, goes through the cop's leg that tied the shoe. Oh, shit. Through the chair and into my hip. Did it penetrate your hip? Well, I got up. It went through my belt, and I pulled the... Mushroom slug like out of oh, my flesh, shit. so it, it, it was just a flesh wound. Right? Oh wow! Man. So, <laughs> however, crazy they, shit. Yeah. I remember this story, but I, I didn't know you were yeah, involved in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the kid shot in the leg. I go up to the desk, and this guy, uh, the, the lieutenant on the desk, is the nicest gentleman in the world. I go, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, uh, Lou, but we got a shots fired downstairs. We have a one cop shot. I'm hit, but I'm all right. Um, but uh, we're not in the interrupted patrol log. Oh, shit. That was a big one. Yeah, right? yeah. Big one back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of got in the put you interrupted, in the interrupted patrol, patrol log. log. Put, put in, you know. And five minutes later, you got shot. Five <laughs> <laughs> you got it now. You got it now. Yeah. We followed a suspicious guy into the lounge. <laughs> I yeah. saw somebody sleeping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, GO 15, and. Uh, I get called into the CO's office. He goes, listen, I don't want to have to do this to you. He goes, but they're looking at the guy who pulled the trigger. He was involved in a couple of Fugazi off-duty incidents. One of them was a shooting. Uh, we think that this was done out of malice, that he was mad and he pulled the trigger on purpose. I was like, no, absolutely not. It was just a stupid joke gone awry. Right. He goes, no, you don't understand. He goes, you're going to the squad. Oh, they show. were trying to get you yeah. to say that? So, yeah. Oh, fuck, so I was like, horrible, so I, yeah. So I was like, that's fucking outrageous. I'm not doing that. And he goes, all right, Tom. Yeah. Nothing I can do then. So that was my, that was my, I was this close to detectives. So. That's a horrible fucking story. Yeah. And what, what happened to the guy that fired the round accidentally? I, I, we all lost 30 days. Oof. We all lost 30 it's days. A lot of days, yeah, man. Yeah, we all lost 30 days for... Uh, Just to have a clean close of the case, Why did though. you Think lose 30 that. days, though? For not being in the interrupted patrol log. Oh, man. And for the principle of it, you know. They wanted to... They thought you guys all had some involvement in what happened, and they wanted to punish everybody. Yeah, I guess they couldn't... That's uh, what happens when you do the math. When you take the busy guys off the tr- oh, yeah. out of the streets for that's a second. My, that's my theory. They shoot the, up the lock. They got to the shoot somebody. The, the police department <laughs> always uses a sledgehammer to kill a mosquito. That's right. Yeah. You know, they always do. If they can't you get never, you good. So you they, didn't make it to the squad, but you somehow you took the test, right? And you wound up getting promoted. Yeah. 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 So, so while you were out there, uh, you know, Closing down these drug spots and cleaning up the precinct. You also decided you're going to take the. Te- you're going to. You took the test. I took the test. Yeah, I took it twice. Actually, I took it uh, three years out of the academy. 
which uh, I just missed it. And I took it, I think, uh, next time was maybe three or four years later. So you get called up? Get called up. Yeah. You get called up, where'd you go? Uh- I went to the 9-4, uh, which was uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, which is a dead, dead precinct. You think As a they, sergeant. They put you down on purpose. Maybe. Yeah. maybe. Slow you down a little bit? Uh, no. <laughs> No, I'm saying that, that was their purpose, right? Were you still rocking the uh, overtime? Was, or? Well, you have to you have to look at it. The, the, the Greenpoint's kind of like a dead end, right. right? But people go through it. Right, right, right. You know, right. go to so other, other, other parts. The other answer parts is cost stops. Exactly. You go into Indy car. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was. So you were still banging down 40, 50 hours a month. So I now was, you're a sergeant, but you didn't like that. You must have grabbed a great driver, right? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Almost like, once again, just like a partner. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest things I've seen, though. Did you, you had to give him the collars, though? Yeah, he got the collars. I recovered it. So I made the 180 80 day. You made the audio courts? Audio courts. For, for our audience, uh, cops go to court on their day off. They get paid eight and a half hours overtime. So that's, uh, and it's sometimes it, it, people say they choreograph it. That way, to make people sure that say that. Well, I never. <laughs> Big bosses say that, that they choreograph it off? to go to court. It was funny. I had a detective in the two three rip when I had it, and he had Friday and Saturdays off, and he every single Friday he had audio court. So I was ordered by the CEO of Manhattan North Detectives to change his audios to Saturday and Sunday. Uh-huh. You know, he never got another audio <laughs> on Friday ever again, <laughs> ever. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> now they were on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. He, wait, he never got another Friday appearance. Uh-huh. I mean, ever yeah. again. Court is closed on yeah. Saturday. Well, we even we even maxed it out, too, with the audio courts. I'll tell you a crime story. Um, four of us, you know, we were down on 180, 80-day audio court, and we bang out the grand jury. So we go back up, four of us in, the, in our car, and said, listen, we're all going to get on now. Right, we're gonna get. We're gonna have an eighteen twenty oh, hour right. day. Oh, you, yeah. So <laughs> oh, they yeah, love that. They love so that. So they, we, we were doing that for a while oh, until, until one day, we're on one hundred forty fifth Street, Liberty. Now you, you got to understand, one hundred forty fifth Street goes cuts through Manhattan into the Bronx, major thoroughfare, a lot of livery cab robberies. It was it was an era where it's delivery cabs. Right, the, taxi cabs were epidemic. Back ep- then. Epidemic yeah. robberies, robberies yeah. killings. They yeah. were. It's a real problem. They had no protections. They had no partitions. Right. Um, so we see this car shoot by us, and the guy gives us the you know big eyed glance like over his shoulder, like he makes us. We're we're not easy to make. I mean, we're we're really easy to make. Mm-hmm. We're four white guys in the car, you know, yeah, right. driving in Harlem. Harlem. In Harlem, yeah, with and like we're all in shit. We're all cop yeah, we're diesel. all we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> Call her j- uh, jacket. Beautiful hair. Yeah. Like, well, they're in the winter, they have the s- green army jackets. Safari yeah. vests. Yeah. You know, those Color vests of over. the day. What is that? <laughs> Sweat band around their arm. Yeah. No one ever wore that shit. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> so, uh, so they make us, right? And we're going to pull this car over, of course. You know, they're, they're moving around, they're talking, they're pointing at us, you know. So we pull over this car. My partner, Terry McGee, approaches. I'm behind him on the right passenger side. We're with the sergeant, right? Sergeant Patty Forning goes to the front, talks to the driver. My other partner, Tommy Barrett, is is on the passenger side rear. So Terry's, Terry's the first at the car. He opens the car. Pow! Right? My first thought is like, Terry used to keep his off-duty in his pocket. Yeah. Right? Back up. I go, ah, oh, this motherfucker let around himself. go. <laughs> Fucking let around go. Sure enough, like happens in slow motion. Terry goes back and he's grabbing his stomach. He's hit, right? This guy comes out of the car with a thirty-eight, and I didn't even have my hand. I, I didn't have my gun out. I just grabbed the thirty-eight and twisted, cracked, grabbed him by the hair and threw him on the floor. Uh, pulled a gun from him. Uh, Terry actually jumps back up, helps me cuff the guy up. Three more guys in the car all have guns, right? So. Uh, Terry shot in the stomach. We uh, was we, he wearing a vest? He was, was blow the vest. Hit him in his belt. Thank God the belt. He had big thick it belt. Stopped it. Thank God slowed it down. Yeah. So it went in only a few inches. Um, That's good. Yeah, yeah. A couple of things came out of that. So um, Terry's Terry's out of the hospital. I actually picked Terry up to go to the grand jury for one eighty eighty day. Because you know, we're going to put this guy in jail. Yeah. Let me back it up a little bit, a little more. 
the guy who shot him was wanted for a homicide. The three other guys were wanted for shootings and a homicide. In the, real bad guys. Mm-hmm. They had no qualms about shooting a cop. No then. qualms. Not at no, all. no. So the one guy who pulled the trigger, he's in, he's in uh, the holding cell on 3-2 PDU. Right? I'm up there with uh, Eddie Clifford. You know what? Yeah, 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 sure. sure. So we're up there you know, doing the paperwork or whatever. All of a sudden, it sounds like a faucet running right, in the uh, holding cell. Look over, and this guy's pouring blood from his crotch. So we, we took his belt. We took his shoelaces. Yeah. So what he did was he used his zipper to sever his penis. Oh, my God. So this guy, that's how crazy he was. Holy shit. So, like, he got, he almost got it all off. Oh. He almost got it all off. What? And he, what, he was doing that so he didn't have to go? Whatever. It was just suicide He didn't want to go to audio court. He didn't want to go to, he didn't want to go to that grand jury. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, uh. But and it was the good, guy you know, who was wanted for the homicide. This guy was wanted for the homicide who, who shot Terry. So, uh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was the first time I've ever seen that, but a pretty desperate guy. Yeah, that doesn't, that's not a usual they, event. Oh, usually they just bang the head off the wall. Right, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so they took him to Harlem Hospital, gave him some duct tape. and uh, <laughs> you know, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was right as rain for the perp walk later that night. Amazing how so, well that duct tape works. Go to True Value Hardware, <laughs> aisle five. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Holy oh, shit, shit. Man. Yeah. The Adventures of 3-2 Anti-crime Wow <laughs> So we, we go down to the uh, We go down as, uh, Was he high in some shit? He wasn't He wasn't as far as I know uh, Or that I remember I, I really That's an unusual thing to do It was just He was a, he was a He was very quiet he was very. I bet you that wouldn't happen in the one fifteen. That was, <laughs> <laughs> or in the nine four. This is a no, three two. This is a three two yeah, story. It's a yeah, three two story. It's a three two man. story all no the way. way. That doesn't happen. Yeah. The yeah. Queens Marines wouldn't be able to handle that shit. You know when he was describing that um, the lounge area. That did you ever go down in the one ten? Their lounge. I did. That's I did. kind of sort of like the way I felt that that play. It was so disgusting. It was just couches against the wall. The lights never came on. Right. I, I can't imagine what it looked like when the lights well, came on. NYPD, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to. But NYPD yeah. police precincts are the disgusting. The TV never yeah. goes They're off. Disgusting. They're it's disgusting. It's in clean. the pitch, yeah. pitch dark. You'd, when you'd walk in there, because we used to make these DWI collars, and either we'd make them in the 110 or the 115. The 110 was actually better because it didn't bother you. The 115, they had cleaned it up. It was a brand new building at that point. And, you know, they would always look for you downstairs. But in a 110, you'd have to feel around. Like every couch, it was so dark in there. You'd feel to, if you felt the body. Somebody and you go, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And then and once you found the free couch, that's where you'd lie down. <laughs> and you didn't get out of your uniform. You just, it was so gross. Yeah. But you, you know, but you learned how to sleep uh, with Everywhere. your head against the nail because yeah. you were so tired. You know, you, look, it was unhuman not to sleep for 24, 30 hours straight, right? Right. right. Yeah, it's amazing what it trains you to do. Stay. My girlfriend always yeah. says to me, she's like, you could sleep anywhere. And it's like, that's what happens. That, you learn how because to Because you that. take advantage. You're like, there's nothing going on right now. You know, yeah, you, ever, between, you, ever, you ever fall asleep just sitting in a chair straight up? Yeah. I'm going to take a nap. Most humans can't sleep like no. that. We can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We learned how to do that. Yeah, yeah. you just tilt your head, your head a little yeah. forward. Well, when I used to work Even in the small. Queens Marines, they used to call us uh, RIP, reading is fundamental. Right, right. We used to get these details over at, uh, like, uh, one weekend, there was the park over there, that big park. What was uh, it? Corona? Yeah, Corona yeah. Park. They'd have a Queens Day. And they used to keep us on standby. We'd be all, you know, we'd just sit in the vans all day. And what you used to do was you'd grab a book and you put it in front of you and you put sunglasses on. And you'd have eight guys sitting in a van and everybody was reading like from the Bible with sunglasses on. <laughs> the missilettes from the church. You'd all be sleeping. <laughs> well, this was a, a great first episode. I'm psyched for the second half. We're going to take a break right now. We're going to come back for the second half here with Tommy Kennedy. There's some amazing stories, right? Yeah, this was good stuff, it, man. man. I'm psyched, man. I almost feel like I'm going to go do some co- with the 3-2 tonight and go work to work. <laughs> <laughs> we got to break it down and tell them exactly what our audience, what streets they are. So That's right. They're driving by there. But it's not the same, though. It's no, we're going to cover some Great. current no, events on the gentrified as they say yeah yeah, yeah. jazz but, clubs yeah yeah condos so we'll talk they about have that, that beer garden on 112 now huh? oh you haven't been there <laughs> imagine you went back to the neighborhood they go, no <laughs> this is back. that guy from 30 years ago <laughs> hey listen it's a different time Tommy. Come down, come down. all right we'll be back in a few we're gonna refresh our teacups here all right <laughs> Thank you.